Hello, my name's Mike and I'm from mushroomman.com and if you're watching this, more than likely it's because you purchased one of our Rishi Mushroom Growing Kits. What I want to do is just go through the instructions with you make sure you have it set up correctly and then if you have any questions um, look below this video and I'll start a, a Q&A so hopefully they're going to be answered for you. So when you get your kit, you're going to receive a humidity tent, instructions, as well as the mushroom kit itself. What you are going to need is a spray bottle with uh, clean water, non-chlorinated if you can do it. But um, you can also boil some water on the stove and then fill up your bottle. Just make sure it's clean water. We just don't want chlorine in it. And you're going to need a dinner plate. Okay. Now when you get a kit, for some reason, people like to throw this away thinking it's packing material. It's not, okay? Notice that there's holes in it. This is a humidity tent. Extremely important for this kit. So the first thing the instructions will tell you to do is to inflate this bag. When you get it, it's usually compressed down. What we want you to do is kind of hold it and get some air in it just by holding it up like this some air is going to go into the white filter it's going to go very slow but it's happening um, the reason why is if it's creased the when the mushrooms grow they'll grow real thin and they won't develop correctly because mushrooms do actually um, grow according to their environment so if you have it smashed like this they're going to grow real thin and smashed but if you can get it open so that it's more like a balloon then we're not going to have that problem as you can see i've got some air inside there it's not all smashed up try to get as much as you can in there the more you can get in there the better just for spacing but this will do it this will at least get it started so according to the instructions after that's done, um, it says to allow it to sit anywhere from um, 15 to 30 days, but usually at about two weeks, this will be completely white and mushrooms will just start to grow on the surface. Okay, if after three weeks and going towards four weeks, if you're not seeing that, then what's happening is we need to get more air into the bag. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to cut a nice big X in the white filter. So remember, after 15 days, if this is completely white, but we have no mushrooms, then we need to start forcing the mushrooms. Here is a kit, roughly two weeks. And as you can tell, it's turned completely white. The bag has been expanded. See how it's kind of expanded like this. So there's room for the mushrooms to actually start growing. Looking closely, you can see mushrooms just starting to grow. See them? The little white balls. That's them actually starting to grow. So of course that's a very good sign that everything is working and uh, going according to plan. Okay, so we're starting to see them to grow and the instructions is asking you to wait until you see at least a half a dozen mushrooms. I mean, they need to be roughly about two inches tall before we move on to the next. So if they're about two inches tall, more than likely you're gonna have like a, a dozen little spots or so. Now here's a, a mushroom kit that's a little further, um, roughly again close to three weeks, and it has quite a few uh, mushrooms growing on the surface. You can really start to see the mushrooms starting to take off. Now these are getting to the point where I may be able to move on to the next step. For this instruction video, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. Now remember, what I said is after two weeks uh, to three weeks, if we're not seeing mushrooms growing, we're gonna force air into the bag to trigger the mushroom growth by putting, or cutting a big X right there on that white filter. Okay, we didn't have to do it with this one. It started to grow pretty much on its own. Now we want them to be roughly about two inches tall. This is just a little bit less, 
but for this video we're going to move on now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this bag open now this white filter here is what we're going to gear from we're going to cut this bag right underneath the white square the impression that the uh, impulse sealer made when it put this filter onto the bag so i'm going to cut right there so Cut it straight across, all the way around. There we go. Now let's see what the inside looks like. Okay, so here's the inside of the bag. You can see the mushrooms growing. Notice the nice white heads. That's what you're looking for. That's good growth. That's that's healthy mushrooms. Now, if that turns gray, then we have an issue, and your kit may not be getting enough uh, air exchange or moisture, maybe growing, uh, drying out. So we have to watch that. Okay. So our next step is to take a plate. Um, I want to stress something here. I get a lot of emails and pictures of people doing, uh, you know, cool things with their kits as far as the humidity goes but um, I want you to understand that if you deviate from using a plate um, the moisture level the air exchange all of that's going to change and it could greatly affect the mushroom kit itself so I know you're very tempted to use aquariums or, or aluminum pans and put them in there we like you to use a plate because when we use the tent it goes over the plate it helps trap the humidity uh, and it, it's just what we gear from okay so what the instructions tells you to do is locate a spot that's out of direct sunlight but it still has light you know like like here you know next to a window but no direct sunlight and the reason why is the the sun hits the kit it can cook it the UV light could actually do some harm to the mycelium because the mycelium is used to being under the ground protected okay right now it's exposed so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this in a place that it's going to stay and then we're going to add water to the plate okay now i want to add as much water as i can to the plate it doesn't matter what kind it is as long as it's not chlorinated because the chlorine can actually um, do harm to the mycelium so even if you have to boil the water for about five ten minutes and then let it sit or just get some water out and let it sit for 24 hours until it the chlorine has evaporated out that's fine um, and you can also do the same with the bottled water that we're going to use so there's now water on the plate you can see where I cut the bag mushrooms are inside and now we're going to take the humidity tent that you didn't throw away and we're going to put it over top now I like to roll down And this gives it some integrity at the bottom. See what I mean? I'm gonna put this over top. And see how this is setting up like that? We're gonna roll this down. Until it's about like that. Now, I do like to set the plate in the kit on a towel because what will happen is moisture will gather on the tent and it won't want to, to roll down and it can roll down on your table and if it's sitting on like a nice wood table it can actually stain it and harm it so unless you know you know that if the table gets a little wet it's not an issue you're going to want to put a towel underneath this whole setup okay so you can see how this holds up and this is how i like it now I don't want you to tuck it in tight like that into the plate. I actually want you to leave it kind of loose because I want air to be able to find its way in through the bottom and work its way up. Okay, not a whole lot, but enough. Now, at this point, everything's set up right. I usually ask customers to send me a quick picture, but now that you see how it's supposed to be set up, it's a no brainer, right? Okay, now what I want you to do is start spraying the tent. I want this tent to stay moist all the time. 
So for me to tell you, hey, at least spray it once or twice a day, no, I want you to keep it moist all the time. I always want to see moisture in it. Now that it has integrity on the bottom, it stays open, we're just going to spray the inside like that. We're going to set it back down. Now this gives it a nice amount of humidity in the bag. The water on the plate keeps the humidity uh, always there. It may fluctuate up and down because we're spraying the tin, but at least it has some humidity at all times. At this point, we're gonna wait. Now, this mushroom can take a while to really get started and really start growing quickly. Okay, uh, it's a slow growing, it's like a, a slow growing uh, wood tree. Okay, this is somewhat like that. Now, as it grows, um, I am going to kind of add on to this video so you can see the progress as it grows. So, right now, if you're watching this video, just understand that I'm going to be adding on to it. So, this is just the beginning stage and the setup, and this is just part one. Part two of it actually growing and harvesting and what to do with it will be coming shortly. Thanks. Hey, this is Mike, and we are back. We're back with our oyster kits. Now, over a course of three to four weeks, uh, we've been spraying the inside of the tent and keeping water on the plate, and these slowly begin to grow until you see what we have here. Now, this particular one, it grew quite a bit because we allowed many pins to form before we actually moved to the next step uh, of cutting off the bag. Okay, now here, it, we had a lot fewer, as you can see here, um, and that's what happens. The quantity goes down if you don't wait long enough for those pins to really form. I like to see maybe no less than eight to 10, okay? Sometimes there's a lot more, but I just want no less than that, or else you kind of jip yourself on quantity, and, and there is no guarantee that this will fruit a second time, although you can uh, give it a try. All you do is you add water into the bag, let it soak for about two days, pour the water out, and put it back into growing conditions, and just see what happens. Now, I wanted to show you how to harvest these, okay? So I'm going to use this one as an example. Um, these are really nice, Now I'll get you a quick close-up. That's not too bad. This is just where it's drying out a little bit. That's not too bad at all. These are beautiful, beautiful mushrooms. Now harvesting these really can get more simple than this. All we're gonna do is maybe snap it off and that's it. Now, if there is some substrate that sticks to the bottom, I just like to take a pair of scissors and trim that off. See, just like that. Now, these, this right now is kind of soft and pliable. So don't freak out because People will contact me and going, these are really soft. They're kind of bru bruising when I squeeze them. Well, that's because they haven't had an opportunity to dry. When these dry, they're like wood. I mean, you know, they're like wood. Um, so what I like to do is I like to cut these into small pieces while they're still soft and pliable. So when they dry out, it's easier for me to put them like in a coffee grinder maybe and get them more of a powder uh, so I can use them as a supplement for teas and put them into my coffees. Um, things like that. Also, one of the best things that I've found to use these for is for a broth. Uh, my wife makes delicious mushroom soup. Not the creamy kind that you see from Campbell's. I mean like real mushroom soup. And she'll use this as a broth and she'll boil a nice pot and put these in here, in there, and then they have that nice slight mushroom taste, but yet the broth is so good for you. This is one of the best things for your immune system. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is just kind of show you um, kind of how easy it is to cut right now. Why it's still soft, look at this. Here's the stem here. I'm just going to cut that off. See? Very easy. And I like to cut them into small pebble-like sizes like this. Um, that way it's just so much easier to grind. Instead of trying to grind this down when it's like solid piece of wood. You know, you can't really do it. Um, I do like the look of that, so I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> Let me snap off another one real quick for you. Look how beautiful. There's a story behind this particular mushroom that I took my granddaughter 
to get ice cream and I let her play on the swing and I turned around and I saw the tiniest uh, mushroom reishi mushroom growing off of a uh, just a dead log so I grabbed it took it home cloned it and wow just beautiful like I said this is starting to uh, dry off only because I I rinsed it off with water but these are still so beautiful and I'll be cutting those and processing them and turning them into powder and we tend to sell them for supplements through the website so I hope you had a good experience on growing your mushrooms like I said you can get a second flush out of them uh, by re-soaking the blocks if you have any questions we do have an email address that you can contact us we are selling supplements and capsules already for you so if you don't want to go through the process you can always buy that um, those will be up for selling roughly about six weeks from today and what is this today's April 10th so April May probably closer to the middle of May we'll have those going for you so if you're interested they'll be on the website until then thank you for buying our mushroom kit and happy mushroom growing